key to my success is that I love the drums. But I still have to practice. I still have to learn. And all those things together helps on keeping my power. It is a physical, a physical, you know, instrument, and I tend to play, you know, the instrument extremely aggressively. As long as you have your passion, then you will be successful. Power Workout 2 is a 12-minute practice routine or exercise that not only builds up power, strength, and endurance on the drum set, but it also helps develop your ability to focus and mentally concentrate on time, technique, and groove as you're playing the workout. I originally came up with this workout as a way to develop my technique, my single strokes between my hands and my feet, and a way to warm up in a short period of time on the drum set. It's an aerobic workout it should take 12 minutes if you play it up to tempo. The power workout consists of 12 individual lessons that focus on five single stroke ostinato patterns played between your bass drum and one of your hands. These patterns are called basic concepts and as you play them you also play with your other hand single, double, triple and three polyrhythmic cymbal patterns. Once you've learned all 12 lessons you put them together as one big exercise in a sequence and that's called the power workout. So finally, the power workout will also help you develop your ability to be ambidextrous on the drum set, which means you can play equally well with your left and right hand. You have to learn all the basic concepts and all the cymbal patterns with both the left and right hand. So let's get started. In section one, you'll learn to play basic concept one and basic concept two, and single, double, and triple beat cymbal patterns. Basic concept one is a 16th note pattern that you play between your hands and your foot, your bass drum foot, while you play quarter notes with your hi-hat foot. First, practice playing it with your right hand and then with your left hand. Play one and two and three and four and with your hands, and you play the E's and the U's with your right foot or bass drum foot. One, two, three, four. Now that you can play basic concept one with your right hand and left hand, now I want you to learn to play basic concept one with the following 13 sticking patterns. Learn each line individually and then play them in a sequence. Play each line twice before moving on to the next line. One, two, three, four. Now that you can play these 13 hand patterns in a sequence, I want you to do the same exercise, except this time play the hand patterns around the entire drum kit. Learn each line individually and then play them in a sequence. One, two, three, four.
In this next lesson, you'll learn to play Basic Concept 2 and the single beat cymbal patterns. Basic Concept 2 is just like the first concept, except that this time you play all the eighth notes on the floor tom-tom, except for beats 2 and 4, which you play on the snare drum. You still play quarter notes with your hi-hat, and you play the E's and U's with your bass drum foot. Learn to play Basic Concept 2 with your right hand first, and then with your left hand. Let me demonstrate. One, two, three, four. Now I'm going to demonstrate the four single beat cymbal patterns. Learn to play them with your right hand and your left hand. The first pattern is playing on the beat. One, two, three, four. The second pattern is displaced by one sixteenth note. So now it's the E's. One E, two, E, three, E, four, E. And then the third cymbal pattern is displaced again by a sixteenth note. So now it's on the ands. One, and two, and three, and four, and. And finally, the fourth beat pattern is displaced again a sixteenth, and you're on the uh of the beat. One E, a two E, a three E, a four E. One, two, three, four. Now that you can play all the cymbal patterns, I want you to learn to play the cymbal patterns with basic concept two. In this exercise, play the cymbal patterns with your left hand and play basic concept two with your right hand. Learn to play each cymbal pattern individually with basic concept two and then learn to play it in a sequence. Play two measures of each pattern before moving on to the next one. I'll demonstrate. One, two, three, four. Now that you can play the cymbal patterns with your left hand, with basic concept two, with your right hand, I want you to switch hands. Play the cymbal patterns now with your right hand and basic concept two with your left hand. Learn to play the cymbal patterns individually and then in a sequence. One, two, three, four. Now I want you to play the cymbal patterns, both left-handed and right-handed, in a sequence. First play all the four cymbal patterns with your left hand for two measures each while you play the basic concept with your right hand. And as soon as you finish the last pattern, switch hands. Your right hand now plays the four cymbal patterns and your left hand now plays the basic concept too. Let me demonstrate. One, two, three, four. In lesson three, you'll learn to play six double beat cymbal patterns with basic concept two. First, learn the cymbal patterns. Just like the last lesson, you start by playing the cymbal patterns on the beat. One E, two E, three E, four E. Then you displace the double pattern by a sixteenth note. One E and, two E and, three E and, four E and. You displace it again by another sixteenth note, and you've got one and a two, and a three, and a four, and a. And then you displace the figure again, you've got one a two, a three, a four. 
Then the next pattern is all the E's and us. E, uh, E, uh, E, uh, E, and then one and two and three and four and. Learn these symbol patterns with your right hand and your left hand first. Let me demonstrate. One, two, three, four. Now that you can play the double beat cymbal patterns, I want you to play these patterns with basic concept two, with your left hand. Play the cymbal patterns individually first with the basic concept two and then try to play them in a sequence. You'll play two measures of each cymbal pattern before moving on to the next line. Let me demonstrate. One, two, three, four. Now I want you to play the six double beat cymbal patterns with your right hand and to play the basic concept two with your left hand. Learn each pattern individually first and then play it in a sequence. One, two, three, four. Now that you can play the six double beat cymbal patterns with your left hand and right hand with basic concept two, I want you to play them in a sequence. In other words, play all the cymbal patterns with your left hand and then switch your hands and now you play them with your right hand. This is the ability of being ambidextrous and these exercises will help you do that, which means you can play equally well with your left or right hand. First learn each line individually and then play them in a sequence. One, two, three, four. In this lesson, you'll learn to play four triple beat cymbal patterns with basic concept two. The four triple beat cymbal patterns are triple beats that first start on beat one, one en, two en, three en, four en. Then you displace it by a sixteenth note, and the second pattern is e and a, two, e and a, three e and a, four e and a, and you displace the pattern again by a sixteenth note, and you got one and a two and a three and a four and a, and you displace it again, and it starts on the uh of the beat, which is one a 2E, a 3E, a 4E. Learn each of these patterns with your right hand and your left hand. One, two, three, four.
Now that you can play the cymbal patterns, I want you to learn to play them with your left hand while you play basic concept two with your right hand. Learn each pattern individually and then learn to play them in a sequence. One, two, three, four. Now I want you to play the same four triple beat cymbal patterns with your right hand on the cymbal and your left hand playing the basic concept. Learn each line individually and then learn to play them in a sequence. One, two, three, four. Now that you can play the cymbal patterns with both your left hand and your right hand, I want you to try to play them in a sequence. First left-handed, then right-handed. Learn these things individually and then learn to play them in a sequence. One, two, three, four. All those years of, you know, studying classical music and playing jazz, playing Latin, playing country, playing funk, you know, trying to play all these different styles of music, I found ended up being a great source of, of, of material for me to draw from when I went in the studio. In section two, you'll learn to play basic concept two with three polyrhythmic cymbal patterns. Three against four, four against five, and four against seven. Let me demonstrate three against four first. Play quarter notes with your left foot or hi-hat foot while you play dotted eighth notes with your uh, cymbal. It takes three measures for the whole cycle to come back around to one. Three measures of four, four. And within that three measures, you'll end up playing four groups of the polyrhythm. The first group starts on beat one, the second group starts on beat four, the third group starts on beat three, and the fourth group starts on beat two, and then you're back to one again. While you play three beats with your hi-hat foot, you end up playing four beats on your cymbal over the exact same period of time. Let me demonstrate. One, two, three, four. Now that you can play the polyrhythm three against four with your right hand and left hand, I want you to learn to play with your left hand while you play basic concept two with your right hand. And once you get a feel for this, then I want you to learn to play the basic concept two with your left hand and the polyrhythm three against four with your right hand. Let me demonstrate first with the left hand. One, two, three, four. And then with the right hand on the cymbal, one, two, three, four. Now play the polyrhythm three against four in a sequence from left hand to right hand. Play the figure for three measures and then switch hands. One, two, three, four. Now let me demonstrate four against five. Play quarter notes with your left foot on the hi-hat and play on the cymbal every fifth, sixteenth note. In other words, 
The first note will be on beat one, the second note will be on the E of two, the third will be on the and of three, and the fourth note will be on the uh of four, and then you're back to the downbeat. When you play five quarter notes with your hi-hat foot, over that same period of time, there will be four notes evenly distributed. That's the four against five. It takes four of these groups in four-four time to, to go, cycle around and come back to beat one again. In other words, the first group starts on one, the second group starts on beat two, the third group starts on beat three, and the fourth group starts on beat four. That is over five measures of four-four time. Let me demonstrate this. One, two, three, four. Now to make this a little harder, I want you to take the cymbal pattern and break it into groups of twos and threes. Instead of playing every fifth sixteenth note like one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, I want you to play one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, or one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and, and on and on. It's basically the exact same four against five, except that the cymbal pattern now is broken into groups of th twos and threes. And it still takes five measures for the polyrhythm to cycle around and come back to one. Let me demonstrate. And practice this with your right hand and your left hand. One, two, three, four. Now I want you to play the syncopated version of the polyrhythmic figure four against five in your left hand while you play the basic concept two in your right hand. It takes five measures to complete the whole cycle so that you end up back on one. And if you have a hard time playing this, start by playing one measure at a time and then you put it all together until you can play it. One, two, three, four. Now I want you to play the syncopated polyrhythmic figure four against five, this time with your right hand, and play basic concept two in your left hand. One, two, three, four. Now I want you to play the four against five in a sequence. First play five measures with your left hand on the cymbal and your right hand playing the basic concept too, and then you switch hands. Your right hand now plays the polyrhythm, the syncopated polyrhythm, and your left hand plays basic concept too. Practice this thing slowly until you can play it up to speed. One, two, three, four. Now I want to demonstrate four against seven. Play quarter notes with your hi-hat foot, and on your cymbal, I want you to play every seventh, sixteenth note. In other words, the first note you'll play will be on one, the second note will be on the uh of two, the third note will be on the and of four, and the last note will be on the e of two. Every time you play seven quarter notes with your hi-hat, you'll play four beats over the exact same period of time you play four beats evenly distributed over seven quarter notes on your cymbal. And you'll play four polyrhythmic groups before you get back to beat one, which will be seven measures later in four four time. The first polyrhythmic group, four against seven, will start on beat one. 
The second group will end up starting on beat four. The next group will start on beat three. And the last group will start on beat two. Then you're back to beat one again. Practice this with your right hand on the cymbal and your left hand on the cymbal. One, two, three, four. Now, once again, to make things harder, I want you to take the cymbal pattern that you were playing, every seventh, sixteenth note, I want you to play, now break that into groups of two, two, and three, which adds up to seven. One, two, one, two, one, two, three. One, two, one, two, one, two, three. One, two, one, two, one, two, three. This is a syncopated version of the four against seven. So it's the same thing as you did before. It takes seven measures for the polyrhythm to cycle around back to one. But now, instead of playing every 7th, 16th note, you've got this rhythmic beat within that space of time. Let me demonstrate. Practice this with your right hand and your left hand. One, two, three, four. Now take this syncopated polyrhythm, four against seven, and play it in your left hand while you play basic concept two in your right hand. And once you feel comfortable doing that, then switch hands. Play the polyrhythm with your right hand and basic concept two with your left hand. First I'll demonstrate with my left hand on the cymbal. One, two, three, four. Now with the right hand, one, two, three, four. Now I want you to play the four against seven syncopated in a sequence, both left-handed and right-handed. Start by playing the cymbal pattern in your left hand while you play basic concept two in your right hand. And you play that for seven measures. Then you switch hands and play the cymbal pattern now in your right hand and basic concept two in your left hand. One, two, three, four. Because in the studio, it's just a different way of thinking. It's, uh, you've got to be, be a problem solver. You've got to be able to be able to do many, many different things and then create new things depending on what the producer or the artist wants. And you've got to have patience. And you've got to be able to deal with people, lots of different types of people. Because you're going to be in the studio for 12 hours a day with one group of people one day then you may be with a whole different group another day. And you got to be flexible. In section three, you'll learn how to play all the cymbal patterns with basic concept two. First, practice playing with your left hand on the cymbal and play the basic concept two with your right hand. So we want to do this in a sequence. So play the single beat patterns with your left hand, two measures each, A through D, then immediately do the double beat patterns, A through F, then do the triple beat patterns, A through D, 
two measures each again, and then do polyrhythmic three against four for three measures, four against five for five measures, and four against seven for seven measures. Let me demonstrate. One, two, three, four. Now I want you to do the same thing with your right hand. Play all the symbol patterns in a sequence with your right hand as you play the basic concept two pattern in your left hand. One, two, three, four. Now that you can play all the symbol patterns in a sequence with both hands, I want you to play them in a sequence, but alternating. In other words, what you'll do is you'll play basic concept two with your right hand, and you'll play all the single beat patterns with your left hand, two measures each, in a sequence. And as soon as you're done with that, you switch and you play with your right hand the symbol patterns, and you play with your left hand basic concept two. Then when you're done with that, you switch back, and now you play the doubles with your left hand and you play basic concept two with your right hand. Then when you, you switch again, now you play the doubles with your right hand, and you play basic concept two with your left hand. So you switch back and do the same thing with the triples. You do the same thing with the three against four, and four against five, and four against seven. This you better practice slowly, because this is definitely a test of your ability to be ambidextrous, switching left to right, right to left, and you want to get to the point where you're as equally as good leading with your left hand as you are with your right hand. Let me demonstrate. One, two, three, four.
more flexible you are, you know, the better you're gonna, your studio career is gonna go. And you gotta be flexible with being able to play different styles. When, whereas opposed to when you're in a band, you can be just what that band is. If I was in like band A, and the band A had an image, and we all grew up together, we all hung out together since we were kids, well, we are what we are, that's it. I don't have to play anything but that type of style of music. Being in a studio, or being on, playing on different people's records, if you really want to be successful as a studio drummer, you have to be able to play all kinds of styles. In this section, I'm going to introduce to you some new basic concepts. The first basic concept is basic concept three. It's very similar to basic concept two, except instead of just playing on the floor tom in the snare drum, I've included the rack tom. So you play and one end on the rack tom, then you hit two on the snare drum, and then you play and three end on the floor tom, and then you hit four on the snare drum, and you go back up to the rack tom. Learn to play this with your right hand and left hand. Continue to play quarter notes on your uh, hi-hat and of course the E's and the U's with your bass room foot. Basic concept three. One, two, three, four. Now that you can play Basic Concept 3, I want you to learn to play all the cymbal patterns with Basic Concept 3. First learn all the patterns individually with the Basic Concept, and then learn to play them with a left hand lead while you play Basic Concept 3 with your right hand, and you learn to play them in a sequence. Then you learn to play them in a sequence with your right hand lead, and you play Basic Concept 3 with your left hand. Once you can do this, and I will demonstrate this, I want you to learn to play Basic Concept 3 with all the cymbal patterns, but alternating between hands. In other words, you play the singles with your left hand, then the singles with your right hand, the doubles with your left hand, and then the doubles with your right hand, on and on and on. One, two, three, four. Now I want you to learn basic concept four with all the symbol patterns. First, let's learn basic concept four. Basic concept four is similar to basic concept two and three, except that now play one, two, three, and four on the snare drum, and all the ands, or offbeats, on the floor tom. Continue to play quarter notes with your hi-hat foot, and all the e's and uhs with your bass drum foot. Learn to play this with your right hand, and then your left hand. Basic concept four. One, two, three, four. Now that you can play Basic Concept 4, I want you to practice all the cymbal patterns with Basic Concept 4 with your left hand and right hand. And once you become familiar with that, I want you to learn to play all the cymbal patterns with a left hand lead while you're playing Basic Concept 4 with your right hand. And then switch hands and learn to play them with a right hand lead and then play Basic Concept 4 with your left hand. And then finally, as I will demonstrate briefly, play the, the cymbal patterns alternating between left and right hand while you play basic concept four. Play the singles with your left hand, then play the singles with your right hand, the doubles with your left hand, the doubles with your right hand, on and on through all the cymbal patterns. Basic concept four with all the cymbal patterns, alternating hands. One, two, three, four.
Basic concept five is probably the most different basic concept in the video. Instead of playing quarter notes with your left foot, now I want you to play eighth notes, one and two and three and four and. And your right foot continues to play the E's and the U's. So now we have a sixteenth note pattern between your feet. I usually lead with my right foot, so this makes this exercise a little bit tricky, because now I'm playing 16th notes, leading with my left foot. With your hands, I want you to play with one hand. You play the ands on the, on the cymbal, or the offbeats of every measure, like one, and two, and three, and four, and, and also you play two and four on the snare drum. One, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and. With the free hand, you'll play all the cymbal patterns. Practice this basic concept with your right hand and then your left hand. One, two, three, four. Now that you can play basic concept five with your left hand and right hand, I want you to play all the cymbal patterns with basic concept five. Learn to play them individually, then with a left hand lead, and then a right hand lead, and then in a sequence, alternating between left and right hand lead, as I will demonstrate briefly. One, two, three, four. Some people have problem where they get this carpal tunnel syndrome or this tendonitis, yeah. and that comes from gripping the stick real tight and not playing the proper way, which is to use your wrist. And what I did when I studied classical music, uh, everything was fingers and wrist. That's the, tech, the proper technique to play uh, the drum. But at, in rock and roll, I started to extend that almost like, oh, I guess almost like ballet, and extended it farther and farther and farther till it became this whole range of motion from my shoulder, you know, and from after I hit the drum all the way up to here is totally relaxed. And just about when I'm about to hit the drum is when I grip tight, snap like almost it's almost like martial arts. I snap the stick into the drum. Now that you've played all the 12 lessons, it's time to play the power workout. And the power workout is basically playing all those 12 lessons in a sequence. So in other words, start with lesson one and play basic concept one with the 13 sticking patterns on the snare drum. Then play the same 13 sticking patterns around the drum kit. Now play basic concept two with all the cymbal patterns in a sequence, alternating from a left hand to a right hand lead. And when you're done with that, play basic concept three with all the cymbal patterns in a sequence alternating from a left and right hand lead, then basic concept four, and finally basic concept five. And that's the power workout. It should take about 12 or 13 minutes, depending on how slow or fast you play it. But definitely start practicing in this thing very slowly with a metronome, if you have one, to make sure that you play all the things technically proper. I use this workout every day as a way to warm up you know, for technique and to get my left hand lead and my right hand lead going. Since I play sometimes left-handed and right-handed, it's a great way to get both those things going for studio or, you know, when I'm on tour. It's not only a physical workout, you know, where it develops your strength and your power and your endurance on the drum set, but for me it's like even more of a mental workout because you have to concentrate so much to remember what you're doing. So those two things together make this workout a great, great exercise for me. And I hope it works for you too. Anyway, I'm going to demonstrate the power workout, and I wish you all the best when you try it. One, two, three, 